Phoenix at Knobles is currently my most ridden roller coaster. I'm familiar with every drop, turn, and airtime hill on that amazing ride. Wolverine Wildcat at Michigan's Adventure is basically Phoenix in a parallel universe. The two coasters have near identical stats and layouts. But while Phoenix has won the Golden Ticket Award for the world's best wooden coaster multiple times, Wolverine Wildcat doesn't even crack the top 50. In this video, I'll be reviewing Wolverine Wildcat and explaining why it's not quite as good as Phoenix. Michigan's Adventure originally opened in 1956 as Deer Park and later was renamed Deer Park Funland in 1972. The park's first roller coaster was an Arrow Corkscrew that was added in 1979 and that coaster still operates to this day. But 1988 signaled the park's transformation into a larger player in the amusement industry. The park was renamed Michigan's Adventure, and the park received a new signature attraction in Wolverine Wildcat. This was actually the first ground-up coaster ever built by the Din Corporation. The company had been founded in 1983, but their first three projects were to rebuild or relocate three classic wooden coasters. And one of those relocations was none other than the aforementioned Phoenix at Knobles. This particular relocation is one of the biggest success stories in the industry. I am extremely thankful the Din Corporation was able to save this masterful Herb Schmeck layout that's jam packed with airtime. So when the Din Corporation was contracted to build a ground up wood coaster for Michigan's Adventure, it's not too surprising they looked to Phoenix for inspiration. It was a highly popular coaster they were intimately familiar with. Wolverine Wildcat is also a double out and back coaster, and both start with a pitch black tunnel out of the station before heading into the main layout. Both coasters have similar stats. Wolverine Wildcat stands 85 feet or 26 meters tall, which is just a few feet taller than the 78 foot or 24 meter tall Phoenix. Wolverine Wildcat traverses 3,000 feet or 910 meters of track, which is a little shorter than the 3,200 feet or 980 feet that Phoenix covers. And both coasters operate four car, three bench PTC trains. But this is where one of the biggest differences is quickly apparent. Whereas Phoenix has absolutely no seat belts and glorious buzz bars that rest well above the laps of most riders, Wolverine Wildcat has the more common restraint setup. You have individual seat belts and ratcheting lap bars. These restraints lead to longer load times than Phoenix but the dispatches in Wolverine Wildcat tend to really be on the slow side. What I find most frustrating about this is that Shivering Timbers is literally right across the midway, has the same restraints, yet that ride has considerably faster dispatches. One issue that was plaguing Wolverine Wildcat's dispatch speeds from my most recent visit was a finicky magnetic gate, and that even caused the ride to go down for a brief stint. To make matters worse, Wolverine Wildcat only has one train so this ride really is limited how many trains they can pump out in an hour. As a result, Wolverine Wildcat is usually tied with Mad Mouse for the longest line at Michigan's Adventure on most days. In my visits in 2017 and 2021, the ride had a 30 to 45 minute wait all day, so this is definitely a ride you want to hit early. The biggest criticism about this coaster over the years has been its roughness. While the coaster itself is over 30 years old, it has gotten a bit more recent track work from Martin and Flaminks. I've had good luck with the second and third to back rows in both 2017 and 2021. These seats had barely any bumps in the valleys, and they offer the best forces too. The front two rows had a bit more bumps in the course, but nothing intolerable. I would strongly suggest avoiding a wheel seat though. Those seats can jackhammer quite noticeably. Once dispatched, you turn out of the station and crawl through a dark tunnel. It's slow, but people are bound to scream. When you emerge into the daylight, you ascend the lift hill. One of the ride's biggest strengths is its placement. Wolverine Wildcat is adjacent to the water, so the views are picturesque for those both on and off ride. The first drop offers a tiny pop of air time for those in the back car, and it allows the train to reach its maximum speed. RCDB lists the max speed as 55 miles per hour or 89 kilometers per hour, but it feels much slower than that, so I wouldn't be surprised if that figure is exaggerated. That's followed by a large turnaround. Those up front get a weak pop of airtime into this element. 
The turn itself is slow, and the resultant drop unfortunately offers no airtime. Wolverine Wildcat then navigates two bunny hills that gradually bank to the left. They remind me of the bunny hills on another ride that the Din Corporation and Martin and Vlamenks both retract in Lake Compounds as Wildcat, and that is not a comparison any coaster should want. These are the two hills where you'll really regret riding in wheel seats. Everyone will get some side jolts, but they're especially bad in wheel seats because they're paired with traditional jackhammering. As for airtime, forget about it, they're way too gradual. The second turnaround is another sizable one that offers okay floater airtime for those up front going into it. You then have another slow turn, but the drop this time offers a decent pop of airtime for those in the back car. Wolverine Wildcat then navigates a double up and double down. The double up is too slow and drawn out to offer any airtime, but the second part of the double down offers a tiny pop of airtime for everyone, which surprised me. I figured only the back car may get airtime here. This is also the section of the ride that appears to have been retracted most recently. You then go through the third turnaround. There's no airtime into this turn, but since it's smaller than the first two, you actually get some laterals. And then the drop off this turn gives another tiny pop of airtime for those in the back. You then traverse four straight bunny hills, except unlike the ones on Phoenix that try to launch you into the stratosphere, the ones on Wolverine Wildcat are relatively slow and drawn out. And that's probably a good thing for the first three because they gradually bank to the left and offer some lateral jolts for those in wheel seats. The only airtime that can be had in these bunny hills is on the third one if you're in the back car because you abruptly dip downwards after the twist. After the fourth bunny hill, you rise up into one last turn, unfortunately getting no airtime, and then you actually whip around this unbanked turn. You have more speed than the ride's other turnarounds, so this one actually offers some good laterals. This is at least one element that Wolverine Wildcat does better than the Phoenix, the final turn. You then hit the brake run and return to the station, ending the ride. In terms of pacing, Wolverine Wildcat is not very proficient. A lot of the bunny hills are throwaway elements, and the large turnarounds are taken quite slowly. But peppered around these mundane moments are some airtime pops. So what would I rate Wolverine Wildcat? I would give the Din Corporation's first ground up wood coaster a 5 out of 10. Wolverine Wildcat is an okay, maybe unspectacular wood coaster. If you avoid a wheel seat, the ride is comfortable enough and there are some weak airtime pops and laterals mixed into the layout. While I do wish Wolverine Wildcat had more airtime like Phoenix, you at least have shivering timbers next door to satisfy your needs. Wolverine Wildcat serves more as a family friendly adult wood coaster in this park. When I visit Michigan's Adventure, this coaster is usually a one and done for me, but it's not nearly as rough as its reputation suggests as long as you choose the right seat. So those are my thoughts on Wolverine Wildcat at Michigan's Adventure, aka the Bizarro Phoenix. What are your thoughts on this coaster? I would love to hear your thoughts on this ride down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like and you considered subscribing because there will be a lot more roller coaster and music park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.